Hello and welcome back everyone to the next episode on SAP UI5 and Fury training. In this series of videos, we are learning the latest development on SAP UI5 with VS Code. In our today's session, we will see how to convert our SAP Web ID based Fury pro application project to VS Code. So the simplest way is probably you can first download your Web ID project in the local machine and then you can start the migration of the project with UI5 tooling to VS Code. Now, what are the prerequisites in order to convert your application to VS Code with UI5 tooling if you are deprecating the Web ID tool? The prerequisite number one will be installation of Node.js. We would need minimum version Node 18 plus as part of our local laptop to be able to converge the code because it is the prerequisite for UI5 tooling. The second prerequisite will be SAP UI5 tooling itself, which you need to install in your laptop, SAP UI5 command line interface and SAP Fury tooling. You can check the description of this video for all the commands and steps in the detail. The third one is of course the VS Code tool, which is the tool of the hour or tool of the choice for developing Fury app downwards. The fourth thing in the VS Code tool, you should have the SAP Fury extension pack already installed. All of these four things, we need to have it ready and handy in our laptop in order to begin the conversion. You can already check the description of this video for more details. Now, once that is done, let's get started to conversion. So what I've got today is a application which was downloaded from SAP Web IDE. This application was developed by one of my students and they have sent me the code of this application on the Google Drive. I've downloaded the folder from Google Drive and now I've extracted that folder over here in my laptop. You can make out that we have new app.json file, which is indicating that this project is perhaps getting built using Web IDE tool. Apart from that, more or less, we have this project structure. But if you also look at some of the files, which I will show in a minute, it will redirect and give you an idea of a Web IDE project. So first of all, we need to open this project in the VS Code development tool. So the simplest way is just go back on the top and say code space dot. It is going to launch the VS Code tool and then open this project folder as a workspace in VS Code. So you can see there, and maybe we can just also open, go to my downloads directory, Fury like app and say open. So now the application is open in the VS Code. We can make out that we have the old way of developing index HTML with the bootstrapping, and you can see building the component container with the old technique, right? So now we would want to convert this to the to the uh, to with the UI5 tooling in order to make sure that this project works both on the bash tool and VS code tool please make sure that you already went into extensions and also installed fury extension pack so that is already installed in your in your VS code environment already once that is installed then only we will begin the migration so now it is very simple just have to press F1 key on the keyboard and search Fury migrate project to use for the use in Fury tools. That's it. Click on that. It is now identifying the project directory for us where it will locate all the necessary artifact along with the namespace and the project type. You can see it has identified the namespace of the project IBM Finance Account Receivable Project and it's a freestyle project built using odata v2 right now it doesn't have connectivity to any system we can change that connectivity we want and now i can choose the project and start migration i will also maybe can take a backup of this code first of all in the git so we can also note down all the changes later on so let's take a backup in the git first I'm going to launch my terminal. It's always a good practice to have a backup of your code. So git init, initialize a local git repository, git add all the 
features and git commit my old web ide project so now we have committed it to the github uh, sorry git repository local git repository so at least we'll know the changes what migration brings in so next step will be to press f1 and start the migration tool which is provided by SAP as part of the tooling. Make sure that you've already installed the SAP UFF tooling. How do you check if your SAP UFF tooling is installed? Just type um, command called UI5-V to check the version. Okay, so in VS Code, especially you running these commands, if you are in PowerShell, they are not going to work. So to also switch to the command prompt, and then you can begin typing these commands. So let's put here UI5-V. And you can see we are on SAP UFF version, uh, CLI version 4.0.2, which is a key. And then also Fury dash V. So you can see it is not giving a version, but at least it, it's giving me the command options. So this way you will cross check. If you don't have them, please check the description of this video to install them in your system. Perfect. So we are ready. It's time to select and start migration. And you can see the migration almost got over <laughs> with the blink of an eye and what system have done so system have got me two new files package json file with all the necessary scripts uifi yaml file which is the main file for um, doing all the necessary uh, necessary uh, middlewares added with the uifi tooling support to connect to the sap uh, sdk for bootstrapping in addition to that application preload module and backend connectivity apart from that you can see in the index html the major change which was done you can also go to compare and just open index html to see it has got ya the additional code added plus most importantly it has got now the component loading through the init in bootstrapping so it is getting the component support and it has added the div tag for loading our component component js rather than using the code based loading with component container object we've got the component loading with the with the ui5 bootstrapping itself so it has deleted the rest of the code also automatically and my final version of index html looks something like this where i don't have any manual script code to load component js it's loaded through a component support component given by sap with a development with component name yes so that it has done the conversion in the manifest also it has added additional support for all the uh, all the artifacts keywords uh, you see source template freestyle yeah and then supported themes it has gotcha according to the fury themes and then all the additional features it has added and minor changes not major ones when it comes to the skeleton according to the latest version of manifest so it has got me all these things now and we are ready to test this application so we can just say ui5 self that's it once again i need to be in command prompt to do this so let's clear the screen ui5 self and i know there is a defect in his project which i will also fix it so let's start the application there you go it's booting up it's starting and uh, that's a very good thing and i can just go back and launch my application over here and it's not getting any data and the reason for not getting data is definitely there's an issue in the code yeah which is which is done by my student so of course there is no there's some bug actually that's why he has sent it to me so i'm going to now fix that bug so let's check it out the the binding part so i'm going to head over back to the binding part in the view where we are binding with our with a fruits entity set and i guess the issue is with regard to the modeling so if you come down in the models section you can see the the ufi model is created outside actually the models directory it should be inside the models directory There's, that was one small fix it's basically a bug fix which i'm doing no need of settings so now the model will will get created let's see if live loader is working for me yes of course live loader is working for me uh, it is loading the application but still the data is not coming so now i press f12 key on the keyboard and you can see there's an issue with the json this time
so the json which we use for the mock data that has got some issues so i'm going to head over back to the json and there you go you can see there's the issue in the json so it's basically a missing comma in the json format or the data images just fix a bit of minor issues on the data set and save it so there's a live loader module which is going to load data live i will again press f12 key to check the console issues and this is still an issue with the apple okay so let's check it out right on the top put a comma there yeah okay so still we have an issue in somewhere on one of the line i guess so so let me just check that it's here on this line somewhere like here i guess we have put double comma there yes okay i save this and there you go my application is live and running fantastic so that's my application is running fine and now you can safeguard your application with the git again so you can just git commit and your application is ready same application now you can push to the github and bring in that into the business application studio to start consuming your application wow so that is how easy it was to convert a web ide based application now to a vs code environment or to the business application studio i hope you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed the content please like share and subscribe this channel and do leave me your comments down below about what else you do you want me to create more videos and more content on till then anubhav signing out thank you once again for your time see you in the next class